Hello everybody, welcome to another video on engine building. Uh, so I'm working on the Honda right now and my focus today is trying to figure out exactly what bearings I'm going to order. So this turned out to be much more complicated than I ever could have imagined. But it is pretty cool. So from the factory, uh, when Honda does the bearings, uh, I guess they have certain stampings on the block and certain stampings on the crank. And those correspond to the bearings uh, based on using a chart. So what you have to do is, I'm going to pull the chart up here on, uh, on the computer, but once the chart is up, I'll show you. Um, so what's going on here is we have our stampings on the engine block, which I'll show you when we get a flashlight. And our stampings on the engine block are, let's see if I can show you from this side here. They're tough to see. But right there, you can see that one all the way to the right, that actually is a D. But you can see that that first is a D there. It's a little scratched because I had a razor blade on it. But I assure you, there's a C there, and you can see the C that's next to it. So basically, it goes D, C, 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 C. Uh, it's kind of rusted, so it's going to be hard for you to see the rest of the, the C's there. But I assure you, it says D, C, 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 C. So now when we look over here, we have... Uh, the letters on the block. So the, the letters actually read from back to front. Um, so you read it from the other side of the block. D actually corresponds to this journal. Um, so you read it from this direction. So in reality it's C, 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 D. So that corresponds to these guys C, 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 and D. So that's what we have up here. And then there's also numbers on the crank. And those are 3, 4, 4, 3, 3. And I'll see if I can get you guys a good angle on the crank over here. But those are at the bottom there. See that? 33443. Three, four, three. So, on the crank, the numbers actually go uh, from journals 5 to 1. So, number 3 corresponds to 5. The next 3 corresponds to journal 4. 4 corresponds to 3. Other 4 corresponds to 2. 3 corresponds to 1. So, what you do is match that up right here and that gives you these codes here. You got C3, C4, C4, C3, and D3. And those codes on this chart over here, a lot of walking back and forth, but on this chart that I have over here in my uh, Helms manual, basically we have a C3 is going to be A, B, C, and then down to 3, green, green. And that corresponds to upper and lower bearings. So the upper bearing's green, the lower bearing's also green. But then if we move over to a C4, we're looking at, once again, A, B, C, and then we're going to come down four. One, two, three, four, which is a green-brown. So the upper bearing's going to be green, and the lower bearing's actually going to be brown. So this is kind of crazy that we're actually going to be mixing engine bearings here. So you would think that since the you know crank is perfectly round and uh, the areas where the crank rides, where the bearings sit on the actual block and on the cradle, you would think that those are perfectly round too and everything sits together, but you can actually change bearing sizes to change the clearance and the tolerance. Um, so it's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, it's very crazy, honestly. So we need to order the correct colored bearings. So as it sits, I have the bearing colors all listed up here on my whiteboard. Um, we've got the main journal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and this is how it's going to be with upper and lower bearings green, 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 brown, green, brown, green, green, and green, brown. So seven green total and three brown total, and that's just for the main bearings. There's a similar uh, setup for the actual rod bearings themselves. And these are some measurements we're trying to take off of the actual crank itself using a micrometer. Uh, measures in thousands and then converting them to uh, millimeters so that we could use uh, I was looking at these king bearings trying to see if I could buy them but I think we're gonna have to go with Honda bearings with this just because um, there's some stuff going on here and I don't want to have the crank polished and I also don't want to have it line board so I'm gonna have to go with Honda um, bearings and then I will plastic gauge it and if you guys don't know what plastic gauge is You'll definitely find out because I'm going to do that soon. But we're going to lay the plastic gauge on the actual journal itself, and then you put it in the block, or you know, I'm sorry, you put it in the block, and then you will 
lay the plastic gauge on the journal, and then you'll put the cap on, which is in the bottom of this cradle right here, and you'll actually, with no oil, sandwich the cradle onto the block and torque it down as you would uh, if you were assembling the motor, and the space in between the bearing and the journal on the crankshaft is going to squeeze down and it'll clamp the plastic gauge. And whatever thickness that clamped down plastic gauge measures at, after you re-disassemble the setup, you measure it with the little ruler it comes with, and that tells you how many thousands of clearance you have. And we have to be within specification uh, if we have any hopes of you know, running this motor solid and for a long time. So, complicated, excuse me, complicated stuff, but uh, it is doable. So, hopefully you guys are learning something from this. I'm certainly learning a ton. Um, I didn't know anything about uh, motor building. This is my first engine build, so uh, kind of jumping in ahead first, but I enjoy it. It's fun. I like learning this kind of stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm going to teach you guys how to do it if you're looking, if you're interested. Um, yeah, stay tuned and learn some more. Next clip I'm going to put in this is probably going to be um, after I've calculated all of the rod bearings. So what I really would like to do to, to fact check myself is I'm going to take all the bearings out. I know I've been talking for a while here, but I'm going to take all the bearings out, uh, uppers and lowers, and label them uh, to their corresponding journal where they sit. and yeah, so what I'm going to do is label all of them and put them all together and then I'm going to take the micrometer I'm going to measure the bearings and see if they're a different size truthfully uh, and see if we can pick out which are the green and which are the brown bearings and just to know that if you know we're actually on track here with with our calculations with how many bearings of each color is and where they go and all this stuff. So yeah, stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to be doing that in a few seconds here. So the next step in the process is we have to figure out which rod bearings uh, we're going to buy, which colors anyway. So these are made much easier uh, in my particular case because they're all going to be the same unlike the main bearings. But on these, you can look at the rod and you can see where the, there's like a separated two between the rod cap and the rod itself. Um, yeah, there's a two right on there. And that right there is your bore size basically. It's a, it's a code for your bore size. So they're all actually twos for me. In this case, all my rods are twos. So that's pretty easy. And then when you look over on the crank, there's a bunch of letters right where I showed you guys. Uh, the numbers were, to correspond for the main bearings, you can see the four C's there. And those four C's correspond to uh, the rod uh, journals on the actual crank themselves. So once again, if you look at the Haynes manual, you look at my chart, and we've got uh, twos and a bunch of C's, so that puts us at four or eight, you know, if you count top and bottom green bearings. So looking over at our chart here on the whiteboard, we've got for our rod bearings, we've got eight green for all across the board green, and we've got for the main bearing seven green and three brown. So I'm going to get this stuff ordered um, within the next couple of days, and when it comes in, we're going to assemble it and plastic gauge it and check all of our tolerances to make sure that we're within specification. Uh, and if we're not, we're going to have to go from there uh, see, as far as ordering other colors and stuff like that. Maybe we'll get extra green or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Our hope is that the block, uh, well not the block so much as the crankshaft has worn evenly uh, on all the journals, because if it has, then these bearings should be the right size and the right fit, and we should have good clearances, but we're banking on that, so we'll just have to wait and see. So the other thing that I'm actually going to do tonight is try to hone these cylinder walls. So I was able to get my hands on a hone. Um, it is not a ball hone, but it's this uh, three-legged style thing with these little stones on it. And so what we're going to do is you, you know, squeeze this down, you put it inside of the bore with a little bit of WD-40, and you spin it around and you go up and down, making sure to not hit, you know, the bottom end down there, the cradle area. And, uh, yeah, you basically put a cross hatch, and uh, I might draw a little diagram about this, but you put a cross hatch on the cylinder wall, and what this cross hatch does, it allows the new ring to seat properly because these cylinder walls are glazed. Uh, you'll see after I do one or two of them that the new 
uh, you know, freshly honed cylinder walls are actually going to be like, you know, a raw metal look, whereas these look kind of shiny. They look like they've been polished. So I'll show you guys these um, before I go ahead and do it. But so hopefully now I have a spotlight here. You can see uh, what these cylinder walls look like. There's a little bit of wear going on right here, and you can see there's a crosshatch over there, like I was talking about. And that crosshatch there, yep. Yeah, you can still see the factory crosshatch. We're going to try to restore that uh, around the whole cylinder wall and we're going to try to make it so the new ring seat. So, I've got my home right here and I've got my WD-40 right next to me. Um, I already went ahead and cleaned this off. This has been used you know, once or twice before I assume, but it should still work fine. So I already went ahead and cleaned out this particular cylinder here, which is the one we're going to be honing first and cleaned it out pretty good with a, with a rag. There's not really any oil in here right now, so that's good. So I'm going to take some of this WD-40 and I've heard not to spray it, I've heard to spray it, I've heard all sorts of different things, I've heard everything you can imagine, but it can't hurt to have, you know, a bunch of lubricant. Um, so yeah, we're sprayed up. Now, main thing here is you don't want to go too far. Because if you go too far, you're going to hit. So I already mapped it out. If I go to the bottom of this, I should be safe uh, from hitting. So I'm going to go ahead and start in here. And I'm just going to start spinning. And I'm going to go up and down. And I hit a little bit. Make sure we stay straight. I just want to check and see what it's looking like in here. Alright, so looks like we're beginning to do a little something. Um, yeah, we're definitely cleaning it off. I can see you know, a little bit of scoring, just a little bit, but looks like we're, yeah, we're definitely taking off uh, some material, so it's good. We're going to keep on going and uh, you know, clean it up. I'm going to go ahead and put some more WD in there. see this end cylinder, you can see the nice crosshatch pattern that's going on in there all the way down. It's got that nice new machine look to it, whereas this one over here is, is all dark and uh, kind of glazed over looking. And you can see the difference right there. So that's the kind of look that we're going for. So, you know, I was actually able to get rid of the edge because you can see where it's brown at the top of the cylinder there. It's just a little edge there. I mean, if you have a really big edge, you need uh, a ridge reamer and you can uh, take that down a little bit, but I was actually able to get it out just by using the honing tool. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do the other three. That one probably took me uh, about 20 minutes or so. So, you know, should take me uh, a little while to get all these done, but I will eventually get them all done. And uh, it will be, you know, just that much closer. So I think that that is where I'm going to call it quits for tonight. I've got all of these cylinders home. It came out pretty good. Um, there's still some scoring. Um, on this one in particular, you can probably see that nice scratch there. I can feel that one with my finger now, so that's interesting. That's probably going to burn some oil, but it is what it is at this point, so yeah. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this video. And I hope that you find it helpful, uh, like with the bearing selection, because that was something that I couldn't really find a lot of info on. So hopefully uh, that helps out somebody that's in the same situation as me. Uh, I understand a lot of people don't even change the bearings, but you know I think it's good to change them at, at 180 or 190 thousand. Um, you know the bearings are showing a little bit of wear, so I think it's while we're in here, why not change them for a little bit of extra money, especially if I can get the right ones. But it's all going to depend on how they plastic gauge, and uh, that'll tell me what the actual specs are. 
So, yeah, look forward to that. I'm going to be getting the bearings soon in Plastic Age, but stay tuned. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.